Thank you everyone for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. If it is you have not done so, please click the bell and subscribe and we hope you enjoy our content. The defense tried to raise serious doubts concerning Merlino and other defendants' involvement in two murders, one of them the 1998 hit on Anthony Tura. Tura was on trial at the time for dealing drugs and plotting to kill Merlino and his family by blowing up his house. The threat was captured on an FBI tape played during the previous trial and again today. When he was in the house at 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, the cops were going to leave him there because they're not going to watch the house. They're going to leave him. That's when he just dumped them grenades right in there with a couple of explosives and blow that and can't hit a key and come. Merlino's attorney, Edwin Jacobs, attempted to show the jury that Merlino did not retaliate and kill Tora, nor were Merlino or any of his co-defendants involved in the 1995 murder of Billy Vesey. Jacobs pointed out that both Tour and Vizi were dealing drugs and may have had lots of enemies. There were multiple cooperating witnesses uh, blaming various people uh, for a given killing, uh, and somebody selected which one to believe and which one to present in this uh, prosecution. I mean, they can't all be telling the truth. The next major government witness to take the stand will be Ronald Previty. Previty is a former cop who was initiated into the mob by then-boss John Stanfa and then became an FBI informant, wearing a body wire for two years. He will testify against Merlino and the others on the charges related to drug dealing, stolen property, gambling and extortion. When former mob boss John Stampa appeared before New Jersey investigators in the early 90s, Ronald Previty, seen on the left, was one of his crime family members. What Stanfa didn't know was that the 280-pound Previty was an FBI informant, and now he is testifying against Joey Merlino and six co-defendants. Previty talked about his life of criminal activity dating back to his days in the 1970s as a crooked Philadelphia cop. I took money from others. I took money from... Uh if a business was burglarized and we got there and there was a TV left, we took it. 
Previty's legitimate jobs included a stint with the New Jersey Racing Commission, taking urine samples from horses to make sure they weren't drugged. But it didn't take long for his evil ways to surface. Did you do it in a legitimate, honest fashion? For a couple of weeks. And then what did you do? I hooked up with some other people there that were uh, involved in this scheme to uh, switch samples. Previty, who had a large bookmaking operation in Hammonton, New Jersey, continued to serve as an FBI informant and later witness. He wore a body wire from 1997 to 99, and many of his taped conversations, including ones plotting drug transactions, will be played during this trial. The jury also heard that Previty has been paid well by the government for his information, $8,600 a month for several years. That brought sighs of disbelief from some in the courtroom. The jury's going to have to decide if there's anything wrong with paying a criminal $103,000 a year, uh, which is likely to be tax-free if he chooses not to file any tax returns. these tapes. Love it. Beautiful day. Why is that? Me and my defense counsel couldn't be happier. Why is that? You'll find out. I Beautiful mean, day. This, the, the story about Georgie whacking the guy over the head with the iced tea bottle, what, what's the... Stay tuned. Stay tuned. That's all I could say. Tease us a little. We can't tease you. Real? We're fighting for our lives up there. You'll find out. How, how about the story about you having to push your mom to the ground? What is that all about? about? Yeah, the, that, that happened truthfully, yeah. Lunatic by the name of John John Vizi out there wanting to kill people. And it, what, you got some information from them? What happened? Oh, well, just, you know, the, the FBI, you know, that has those moral obligations to inform you and then make up some and inform other people and start a war. You know. Is that what happened? Yeah, something like that. Came yeah. Thank you. Got John, yeah. Special Agent Knight. Is that who the John is? John Vizi? Yeah. Did he go by in a car or something? Something or was, like that. You were walking down the street. He was on his way to visit his brother. His brother lived a few blocks away from him. And you were walking down the street with your I was mom? taking bags in with my mother in the shopping. And you did what? I had to protect my mother because I didn't know if this raven maniac had a gun or not. You know, they, they talk about not killing innocent people, but, you know, my mother could have got killed that day. Okay. Thanks, right. And was this, was this after the FBI had informed you that, that there yes. could be a threat of your life? Yes. So John is the one you were looking at. No, it was looking at anybody. Right, soon after or right after they warned you? Or? Uh, sometime after. We're talking about 96, 90, no, 94, 94? Yeah, sometime. Myself, Dutchie, and Kawadi were notified the same day. Okay. You think that works? I'm going to just raise some more questions. Judge, don't have to do Thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on who we should do next in the comments. This is Infinitely Productions. We love you.